Good evening and welcome to All Saints this morning as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. I do have a handful of announcements before we get started today. First, I want to thank everybody who came out yesterday for our work day. We have lots of paint that went on the walls and lots of things that got cleared out and lots of costumes that went through, all sorts of different things. So thank you to all those who were able to join us. This week we have a handful of events uh, coming up. On Monday we'll have Stations of the Cross at 6 p.m. Weather permitting will be outside. It depends on how soggy the ground is. On Tuesday at 7 p.m. we will hold Triduum 101 uh, at, via Zoom. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday combo, please join us for that. On Saturday will be our next food pantry, mobile food pantry, so please uh, consider joining us to help at that event. And then on Sunday, we will have our Palm Sunday service with an option to be here in person. It will all also be simultaneously broadcast, but if you would like to come, please um, sign up online so that we know who is coming and have a sense of how many people and we look forward to worshiping with you here in this space as well as online at 10.30 on Sunday. We do for that service and the services that follow need a lot of people to sign up. Uh, we're looking for lay servers and uh, readers and ushers, greeters, that kind of thing. So please make sure that you um, check that out and fill it out so that we can go ahead and worship safely. The diocese is starting a new program called Sacred Ground, which is an education program out of the Becoming Beloved Community initiative of the Episcopal Church. There's a lot of information online, so please check out the diocesan website and sign up if you're interested. And then the last thing that I want to let folks know is that, um, unfortunately, we had two deaths in the parish yesterday. Dorothy Ekstrom, a longtime member, died in the morning, and then uh, Deacon Mary Sue Sturgeon, who served here and throughout the community for 30-some years, um, died in the afternoon, or the evening. So please keep the Ekstroms and uh, Jet Kauf and all of the families in your hearts and prayers at this time. Amen. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. In his mercy endureth forever. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor any likeness of anything that is heaven in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, Lord have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, Lord have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, Lord have mercy, mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep, keep this law. <coughs> Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, Lord have, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep, keep this law. law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, Lord have, have mercy upon us, and, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, Lord have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, Lord have, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, Lord have mercy upon us, and, and write all these thy laws in our hearts. hearts we beseech thee. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy 
Son, Jesus Christ, that have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit, you. let us pray. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. A reading from Psalm 51, verses 1 through 13. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Our sequence hymn is Ah, Holy Jesus, page 158 in the hymnal will do verses 1, 2, and 4.
Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered him, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives lose it, and those who hate their lives in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came down from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice came down for your sake, not for mine. Now the earth will draw people to myself. And now the earth will judge this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I lifted up, am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death that he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For the past five weeks, Jesus has been making his way slowly to Jerusalem. As he made his way to the festival, the crowds have been getting bigger and bigger. Lots of people have come to observe the feast days, but even more people have come to witness to the teaching and the miracles of this man called Jesus. On this morning, we hear about the coming of some pilgrims from Greece. According to James Ernst in his commentary on this scripture, the Greeks are like a scouting party of all the people, people who will be drawn to Jesus when he is lifted up. These are not just casual visitors, and Jesus knows that. When the visitors say they want to see Jesus, they are not particularly saying they want to physically see and touch him. The word see, in this case, means they want to understand who this person is. The Greeks represent the other sheep that, the Jesus, that Jesus will bring in. And Jesus, for his part, recognizes that this is not a casual meeting. This is for him a sign that the hour has come. Up until this moment, we have heard from Jesus only that my hour has not come. Think about the wedding in Cana when he tells his mother that he can't change the water into wine. And he says, my hour has not come. Or when the authorities tried to arrest him in the temple, but no one laid a hands on him. And he says, my hour has not yet come. But this is when he realizes that his journey to the cross has reached the crucial point. The hour has come when the Son of Man will be glorified. I can sympathize with the words of the Greeks. I also would like to see Jesus. On the surface, that means to me an in-your-face, up-close and personal encounter. I would like to see the five-foot-three-inch man from the Middle East that I have always pictured, to be able to reach out and touch. But the word see in the Gospel reading for today means understanding or illumination. All along his journey, some people have been able to see Jesus, and some people simply have not. I wonder where I fit in. Jesus offers us a parable by way of explanation, the story of the grain of wheat. We hear that a grain of wheat must fall into the earth and die, and if it does that and remains a single grain, it must bear much fruit. Why must we die in order to bear fruit? 
This is spring. New sprouts and plants are starting to break through the earth. We can see green tips just waiting for rain and sun to help them to grow. A few weeks ago, I was at my daughter's house with two of my grandchildren, ages two and four. We went outside to look to see if we could see the tulips they had planted in the fall, 100 bulbs in all. We were looking for the new life that was coming forth, and sure enough, the shoots were there. I want to see Jesus. I want to see the abundance of new flowers that come from a few bulbs, the beauty of several buds from a single tulip bulb. Then, after their season is over, we will dig up the bulbs and let them dry out during the winter season, or sometimes we leave them in the ground to dry out. They must wait through the season of dying in order to be able to bring forth new flowers in the spring. I want to see Jesus, but if I want to follow Jesus, I must not be the single grain that falls on the earth. I cannot hoard my life grasping for my survival without realizing that first I must surrender my own goals and wishes and plans in order to follow Jesus, in order to produce fruit that means health and prosperity and safety for all. I have to reach for those on the margins, the people always on the outside. I must have a higher allegiance one that comes from understanding Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I listen to the words of the gospel writing and I get stuck on the agony of Jesus as he tries to reconcile what he knows is going to happen. He says, now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. In the other three gospel accounts, Jesus is in the garden and prays for the cup to pass from him. Prays that if it be his Father's will, that he will not have to suffer this death. What should we understand from these words that are somewhat different? John Calvin, in a commentary on this gospel lesson, wrote that Jesus struggled to be able to face up to what was coming. If he had not struggled, so in the face of the difficulty confronting him, why would we think that maybe the example applied to us? But Calvin says, It has not been given to us to die without feeling of regret. But when we learn that he had not within him a hardness like stone or iron, we summon courage to follow him. In other words, Jesus struggled in the face of death. Jesus knew what was coming, and he was obedient to the will of God. But he struggled. Jesus confessed his fear of death, and that is how we can relate and follow him. And this struggle should give each of us comfort. There is room for us in our Christian journey to struggle. I want to see Jesus. Well, I have seen him in his teaching, in his miracles. I do not see him as the five foot three man from the Middle East, but I do see that through my belief in him, I, too, can wish that the road I follow need not be so difficult and that there is room for my struggle. I realize that I need to be the grain that falls on the ground and dies so that I can reach out to the ones on the margins, to those who are powerless, to the outcast. The weeks to come draw us deeper into the passion. We will be asked to walk with Jesus to the cross. We will consider his agony. We will also experience the joy of the resurrection. In all of this, we must be ready and willing to see Jesus. Let us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word thou hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers from which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in thy truth through the Holy Word, and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Scott, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy holy grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. closing hymn is In the Cross of Christ I Glory, page 441 in the hymnal. We'll sing verses 1 through 4.
Savior Christ has given us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, cross you have, have redeemed the world. world. May the souls of the departed rest in peace. May, May the light of perpetual shine, shine upon, upon them. them. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.